Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Thursday, the 7th of September. 21st century is Asia's century, says PM Modi at ASEAN Summit. Pakistan announces crackdown on electricity theft amid protest over inflated bills. And Bangladesh president calls for durable solution to Myanmar crisis. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday declared the 21st century to be the century of Asia and said Asian countries need to build a rule-based post-COVID world order. Addressing the ASEAN India Summit in Jakarta, PM Modi termed ASEAN grouping as the central pillar of India's Act East policy and said even an environment of global uncertainties, the continuous progress in fields of mutual cooperation is a testament to the strength and resilience of India's relationship with the bloc. 21वीं सदी एशिया की सदी है हम सब की सदी है इसके लिए आवश्यक है कि हम एक रूल्स बेस्ड पोस्ट कोविड वर्ल्ड ऑर्डर का निर्माण और मानव कल्याण के लिए सबका प्रयास फ्री और ओपन इंडो पैसिफिक की प्रगति में और ग्लोबल साउथ की आवाज को बुलंद करने में हम सब के साझे हित है well, later in the day, PM Modi also attended ASEAN East Summit before departing for New Delhi, which is all set to host the G20 Summit on September 9th and 10th. Mauritian Prime Minister Pravin Jagnath and President of Nigeria Bola Ahmed Tinubu have already arrived in the national capital, while several other leaders are expected to arrive by Friday. Ahead of the final summit, flags, morals and graffiti have turned parts of Delhi colourful. Comprehensive security plan is also in place to prevent any untoward incidents. And amid the uproar over the centre's one nation, one election idea, India's Chief Election Commissioner Rajiv Kumar on Wednesday indicated that the poll body is ready to conduct elections as per the legal provisions. During a presser, the CEC said that under the provisions of the said law, elections could be announced six months before the five-year tenure of the government ends and that the norms were similar for assembly polls. Been better than that. So the idea is to give a, a error-free electoral roll and make the ex, do the exercise of sweep to bring every voter to the voting, polling station and make the polling station such that the voting experience is very encouraging in the true spirit of the democracy, festival of democracy. And the issue of a single election has triggered a nationwide debate since last week when the center announced the formation of a high-level committee under former President Ramnath Kovind to explore holding simultaneously polls to the Lok Sabha, state assemblies and local bodies. Opposition leaders have called the concept profoundly unconstitutional and a clear violation of the Union of States Federalist basic structure of the Constitution. Moving on, amid ongoing protest over inflated power bills, Pakistani authorities have announced that they will launch a crackdown against electricity thieves and those who don't pay the bills. A report. The Pakistan government has announced plans to launch a crackdown on electricity theft, which officials said on Wednesday led to losses of billions and higher bills for the common citizens. This comes as Pakistanis in many cities have gathered in recent days to protest against record utility bills, demanding the government to roll back the recent increase in the electricity tariff. Power Minister Muhammad Ali said the government is considering selling stakes in three high-performing state-owned power distribution companies through an initial public offering to resolve issues of the debt-ridden sector. जो इलाके जहां पर हमारी बिजली की चोरी ज़्यादा है, उसका हमें पूरा डेटा हमारे पास मौजूद है और हम उन इलाकों पे ज़्यादा तबज्जो देंगे और वहां पर हम बिजली की चोरी कम करने के लिए क्रैकडाउन करेंगे और पूरी मेहनत करेंगे. The South Asian nation's power sector has been plagued by high rates of power theft 
and distribution losses resulting in accumulating debts across the production chain, a concern also raised by the IMF. And the main border crossing between Afghanistan and Pakistan, Torkham, was closed on Wednesday as security forces from both the countries exchanged fire, reports have suggested. Local residents ran for cover as the sound of gunfire rang out at the border. Security officials from the area who spoke on condition of anonymity to Reuters said that the Taliban and Pakistani forces had exchanged fire, but there were no casualties. The crossing has been closed just several times in recent years, including in February this year, when thousands of trucks laden with goods stranded on each side of the border for days. Well, Bangladesh's President Mohammad Shahabuddin on Thursday called upon the international community to find a durable solution to the conflict in Myanmar, which has driven thousands of Rohingya refugees to his country. The remarks came while attending the East Asia Summit in Jakarta. Shahabuddin said that delays to repatriation of refugees and shortage of humanitarian support could put the entire region at risk. Mother of Humanity, Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, sheltered 1.2 million forcibly displaced people from Myanmar on humanitarian ground. Even in the seventh year of the crisis, there is no solution in sight. Where is Bangladesh is pushed to the limits. It is the collective responsibility of the international community to find a durable solution to this crisis in its place of origin in Myanmar. While Bangladesh is hosting more than one million Rohingyas, most of whom held Myanmar after a military crackdown on the ethnic minority group in 2017. Attempts to begin repatriation in 2018 and 2019 failed as the refugees fearing prosecution refused to go back. Local communities have been increasingly hostile towards the Rohingya as funding by international aid agencies for the refugees has dwindled. Moving on, Nepal's foreign minister N.P. Saud has applauded India for its contribution in development of the Himalayan nation and said his country is fortunate to have India as a neighbor. Saud added he's looking forward to continued support from the southern neighbor. The comment came a day after Chinese envoy to Nepal, Chen Song, tried to downplay India-Nepal relations. In a violation of diplomatic etiquette, Chen Song tried to portray India in negative light and advised Nepal to deal cautiously with India. India has invested billions of dollars in the Himalayan nation's infrastructure as it looks to encounter the influence by China among the smaller neighbors. And the Indian Space Research Organization on Thursday released a video with fresh images captured by its spacecraft Aditya L1. The images, which were taken on September 4th, showed a selfie of the spacecraft Earth and Moon respectively. Following quickly on the success of India's recent moon landing, the country's space agency had launched a rocket on 2nd of September to study the sun in its first solar mission. The Aditya L1 is designed to travel 1.5 million kilometers over four months, far short of the sun, which is 150 million kilometers from the Earth. It is meant to stop its journey in a kind of parking lot in space called a Lagrange point, where objects tend to stay put because of balancing gravitational forces, reducing fuel consumption for the spacecraft. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see the same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.